Oh, okay. So uh, <laughs> I've never interviewed a wrestler before. But awesome. <laughs> Solo, darling, how you doing, ma'am? Hey, uh, tremendous, I suppose. How are you? I have well. All right, I have to warn you, we're not very professional here. Uh, so, <laughs> and I'm sorry, I could we we don't have a bigger audience for you too while we're at it. So. Oh well, the world's on fire. Um, yeah. So I feel like that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of the world as you know it, but you feel fine, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing matters. Smile anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Officer Magnum? He uh, he's actually he just hopped on the bed next to me. Uh, oh, he's got his little neck pillow on. So, he's your valet. He accompanies you to the ring. Right he's just like laying down. He's got his little like uh, cone pillow on right now. Mm. He is my companion. He comes with me to the ring, and. Uh, He's cool chilling there too. Like he'll just like watch a match sometimes or he'll go to the back if he's feeling really tired and crawl on a suitcase and take a nap, you know. As Nobody you ever tries to rib anything, him in any way? I mean. No, no. Um, people get really protective over him in the locker room. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure how to approach this because there's been, there, there's been some pretty explosive stuff in the wrestling world this week and it's not my world. I'm just a fan and, and, you know, a visitor. Um, do you, do you want to talk about that at all? Or do you want me to skip over it? Because I can, I know there's a lot of people in there that you have worked with and, uh, and, and probably, and maybe, you know, some of the uh, victims too, if they are victims, I don't know. Do you, are you more comfortable not talking about it or do you want to touch on it? I'm, um, <laughs> you'll find out. I'm a hundred percent comfortable with, myself with all of it um with everything because it's kind of you have to be somebody's got to be uh in a in very tragic and very explosive situations uh i it is a lot i do know the victims i am also a victim uh, but i do not frame it that way personally um i've been wrestling 12 years uh, i started in 08 and uh I have had countless sexual assaults. Uh, I've been blackmailed. I've been, the 2020 term is gaslit a lot. Mm. All right, uh, lots of emotional abuse, um, which I think sometimes, depending on the sexual assault, is, is worse. Emotional abuse lasts longer because it's it's more subtle. Uh, it, it comes out in weird ways and it comes out in things that can be disguised as or feel like, and those types of terms are very uh, desensitized, right? Like you're not really necessarily keen on, hey, you, don't say that because that's gonna leave an effect on me for a long time and I'm not gonna know it till my next relationship. There's a lot of, uh, of severe <coughs> things uh, that can come from that as, as well as rape. Um, I've not been one of the ones to speak out. I've reached out to my girls, to my sisters, um, as, I, as I can, because I feel like the, the feed is very overflowing. Um, it's so much, there's so many stories that I can't really keep up. And uh, I reached out as much, but I do have a farm. It is called the Darling Farm. I have four cats and two dogs. And this one is Marshall. Uh, so you love animals, that's, that's awesome. Everybody should be good to animals. Yeah, I do. I'm a studying veterinary technician right now. I am a current studying one. Uh, I'm in the same program as Kimber, actually. We have this, we go to the same school. It's an online school for a certification that you can take anywhere for, for vet tech. Kimberly? Kimberly? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, uh, I, I just want to lead with empathy. Hmm. I, I empathize with my sisters. Um, with people that have suffered these things. I, I bear no ill will. I don't have any resentment. I don't harbor hatred. Uh, I lead with love, despite that being an unpopular decision. Uh, in this life, you have options. And I see no good coming from resentment, from wishing bad come to these people. Um, these people that have made these aggressions 
are suffering. It seems so clear to me. It's not the bad guys and the good guys. I, I dare anyone to say that they are squeaky clean. For we have all made mistakes. And, and these, depending on the severity, right, they have been awful, awful, awful things that have happened. But they are not well. They are hurt. They are acting in fear-based aggression. Right. Uh, there's a lot of talk of power play, and I, I see it, and I, I think, wow, that's a lot of trying to feel that power through lack of confidence, through not feeling of deserving of love, to feeling some trauma that you must have had happen to you, and it was not okay to say it. And so you're passing that pain on. And I, I want it to be clear that I'm not excusing or siding, that's not my life. That's not how I, I look at this world and these people and myself. I look at us as how we're all one. We are all made from love despite our decisions. We are all made from love. And I my heart goes out to everyone. And just as much as clearly the, the people that have suffered the aggressions need help and need love and need to feel like they can finally let these things rest, these, uh, these these boys need help. Well, you said boys there. I mean, doesn't, do you think that that's part of the problem is that everybody's trying to be one of the boys and so they, they have to invent these, you know, extravagant, uh, outrageous, you know, uh, things that they can fall back on as stories later, you know, and it's, it's very fraternal. Um, no. I mean, in the business, you know? I think that's a, I think that's a, a very, um, it's a very easy thing to fall into, but I don't think it's an invention of, I think it's been desensitized because like our generation, right? Okay. Haven't we heard all the stories of Shawn Michaels and the horrible things? Yeah. Uh, right. There's hor horrible things he did to women. Um, I don't need to repeat them. Uh, and those things became stories and then Humorous. younger they, generations come in and they feel, no, I, I don't necessarily think they have to like top that. And I think the mentalities that they have of feeling that they might need to be wild or whatever are young, immature, um, and emotionally bruised, uh, people that are hurting. It comes from pain. No one would do that to someone if they weren't feeling some kind of negligence or some kind of void that they're trying to fill, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it comes, comes from pain. Pain's just because of pain. And then when you, you're hurt, you want to cause it to someone else necessarily. And there's this constant vicious cycle of a void, I feel. Um, and so and so it goes without saying that obviously I want all of, all of the people that have suffered the aggressions to feel they can always come to me. All the girls, I try to reach as many that I thought would probably let other people know, let, let other girls know I'm here, 100% here, and and we'll get through it together. And I also, given time, feel like shutting people out and turning them away sends them with the same pain to another audience. It sends them to another group with the same pain, not understanding what they're doing and not understanding how to fix it. So I think if we want the world to be how we want it to be and how everyone wants wrestling to be, we have to lead with love and empathy. It's the only thing that's going to get us the love and empathy we wish to have back. Well, I mean, you, uh, you have a little bit of history, I mean, friendship wise with some of the accused, do you, do you not like Joey Ryan? I mean, isn't everybody friends with jo Joey Ryan and the whole, well, the dick flip and, and uh, move and all this, you know, like really ex like, um, cartoonish stuff. I mean, like, what does that imply? I mean, I, I don't know nothing negative, but I mean, uh, as far only as far as you know people on both sides and i think it's great that you said you lead with empathy um but i mean what what's that like to i mean you have friends on the other side that are stand that are stand accused um 
And I mean, these are these are pretty outrageous charges. Um, I guess I don't know what I'm saying. I, mm -hmm. I mean, what's, the, what's that like? It's sad, man. I didn't know any of that. I didn't know that was happening. Hmm. I didn't know. I, and, and that's not, I'm not, you know, this is, it's blown up to proportion when you're outside of wrestling, right? One of the boys, it's blown up. It's, you know, I, I fight for intergender wrestling. I fight for equality. I fight for, right, all of us to be seen as our name, not what we, you know, our, or our orientation or our gender. I, I fight for that because that's just, I want that. I want to be able to wrestle whoever I want to wrestle, not limited right so you have to come from that standpoint of where i'm at in this business and uh and that my stories really aren't out and i i've told the girls as you know road trips happen or you meet friends and you make friends and you tell them stories and you explain this is why i am where i am today this is how i got here right all those things come naturally when you start to develop these relationships with your co-workers wrestling is is blurred in so many regions um whereas like other departments have like an hr you know, we don't we don't have uh, we have so many crossovers where big, important things in our life happen with the people that we share locker rooms with. Big moves happen with the people that we share locker rooms with. Um, we uh, get married, we get divorced, we lose a, a sibling, we lose a parent, we lose one of our own. We gain a child. Right. Like someone has a kid. Like we go through all these life moments these important moments in our life together and it creates a bond um that is, is really hard to explain outside of this this realm right except on maybe other entertainment fields that are that like travel so closely right mm. um i anytime i was confided in i always let them know they have my support and i can make suggestions i can i can say you know i'll, I'll have your back during this um, so many people, when they say, I have your back during this, they don't necessarily know what that entails. And then when, when it comes time, they might not have the strength. And, um, and that, that's perfectly okay. And I understand that. Uh, when I say I have your back, I, I don't care what that would entail next. I want to make sure we get to where we need to get. And I want everyone's best. I want them to be at their best. And I, uh, I didn't know... I didn't know, and that makes me sad, and it makes me disappointed that I didn't see, um, because you you trust the people. I don't like to hear a rumor and make an assumption. I want to know the person on a firsthand basis. I know, you know, stuff was said about me when I first started, and I was in a very toxic, I don't use that word often, environment, and I felt like no one ever asked me these questions. They made these assumptions and they made this, you know, they thought this about me and it's not true. And I, I hated that feeling. It feels very covered up, you know, it feels like you can't even be yourself because they don't even know what yourself is. They didn't ask you. They, they wanted to make that assumption about you. I, um, so I give everyone the chance to be seen as they are in this moment. Uh, I haven't, I haven't, talk to Joey. Uh, some of those girls are my friends. And uh, I, need, I need that to have space. I need that to have time. Mm. I don't I mean, it's own any of it. Like, you know, I don't know if that's what you were curious about. I can't just because I am friends with these people or have been friends with these people. Um, it doesn't mean I can I can condone it. Mm. Well, yeah, not condone. I, I guess I just it was kind of a what what now kind of question, you know, because um, it, it I'm I'm sure it's a Ooh. tough spot to be in, and I don't want to I don't want to you know bring it down like a total bummer, but because uh, I did want to talk about your your you know your career personally too, I just wanted to get your take on that, and um, you know. Uh, I think it's great that you don't want to, you know, burn them down. These guys, these people down with, you know, torches and a lynch mob like some people do. But you're you're also you're handling it in a very uh, mature way, and and I appreciate that as a fan. Um, when did you do you do you want to take it in a more positive direction now? 
I can take it in any direction. I find that although this is a very heavy and it's a, it's a dark, necessary time, I find, um, I'm very optimistic for the future. And I'm, I'm just, uh, I stopped going on Twitter, basically. So I hope uh, if you guys have tweeted at me, I've just barely, I just barely go on it because it's so overwhelming. I do believe it will get better. I do have ideas to make it better. I, I can't, it's in my genetic makeup. I don't know if, how much you know me. I don't know um, what you all know about me and that's fine because I'm, I'm here and I left my camera on for you to see. I, I cannot give up on people. Um, I can't, I love, I love everyone. Uh, I can't love what has happened right i can't i can i feel that pain i feel that pain for my friends um but i i know it can get better i know it can yeah i, I apologize by the way i don't have a webcam so i hope it's not making you uncomfortable that i'm hiding behind an avatar you know but. no i wasn't sure and it just kind of said do you want to do both and i was like i guess i'll just click okay and we'll see where it goes but i picked marshall up and i have this fur like all over me now so you see me <laughs> I'm actually allergic to cats. What? Yeah, I know. I know. I, just, I think that's a little known fact that is, is kind of hilarious. I'm, I'm very allergic to cats. I take Zyrtec like, you know, every day, two pills a day. Um, and then I forget because I feel good. And then I, you know, the fur in the face and I give them kisses. And I'm like, oh, my God, why did I do that? Right. Ah. <laughs> Four cats, you said, right? Four cats is, uh, yeah, the least amount of cats I've had since I was 16 years old. Wow. When did you uh, get started in wrestling? Who trained you? Mm -hmm. uh, I train at the Wrestle Factory with Quack and Hollow Wicked uh, and Dasher and everybody. Uh, that's where I really got training. Um, I started at OVW and was the worst experience of my life. And I, When it was a developmental camp for WWE? No. Oh. Just after. And... Uh, yeah, it was a very, it was a very not good place. I didn't, I didn't learn there. I did learn, I did learn Carney. I did. Wow, did I learn about um, the extent of which people will go to lie, and uh, and use you. I did learn that, and that made me very street smart. Even though I come from the Bronx, and I kind of didn't need that training. Pretty street smart anyway. Uh, and I, I left as soon as I could and went to Florida, and I mostly learned on the road. I did a, a positive contact with Drew, Drew Cordero for Beyond, and I, uh, I go into detail about learning on on the road like that. Um, but truly, I got my my training with Truth Martini. I did a, a like eleven weeks. We did like a training block for women at the time. It was like a girls' class, and it was like seven weeks, and then we extended it, and it was really cool. So I got a lot of good fundamentals there with Truth Martini, and then I came to the Wrestle Factory, and that's where I'm at. I mean, it's quarantine, but that's <laughs> barring quarantine. That's where I'm at. <laughs> well, um, you you've definitely gotten better. Uh, I remember you you started and you you were really pushing the. I don't know, like you said, wrestling has blurred lines, and so I don't know whether it would be more respectful to. Well, there's there's different sides to wrestlers because it has to be that way, right? Um, you started with a, a focus on like a, a the, the deal was you would get a sweet tooth during a match and it would jazz you up and energize you. Right. Is that correct? The Popeye theory. I, uh, I have theater background. I was a musician for about 18 years. I did more of that entertainment than I did wrestling growing up. Right. Like I started wrestling and, and due to my, um, due to my start, due to how I began, I didn't get the learning that I wanted. I didn't have the, the knowledge I wanted. I, I come from an academic background. I studied chemistry and sports medicine, bachelor of science of both, dual degree. Um, my mother is a teacher for my whole life, worked for the Board of Education in New York City. I come from a very academic background and all I wanted to do was learn everything there is to learn about how to wrestle. I wanted to learn and there weren't those people around me and nor did I have somebody a mentor of sorts to be like, hey, here's a good school. I didn't have that. Um, I survived sexual assault, rape, and blackmail. I ran to Florida, and I tried. Yeah, you mean at the academy or at like a 
Like when you got into the wrestling world. When I got into the wrestling world. Okay. And uh, I don't know how, but I just decided, you know, okay, well, that's not going to define me. I need, I need to figure out where I can go. And um, Florida seemed like the place. And I met Lexi, Lexi Fife, and she works with Shimmer. Uh, and Shine had just started up at the time. And so I thought, well, there's girls there. At this, I hadn't really wrestled many girls. There were only like two or three girls in OVW at the time. And they'd come in and out. So I, you know, I went there and I was still hungry for information. And the thing I knew that I had that I was capable of, it's like, well, wrestling, right? There's different sides to wrestling. It's the entertainment factor. It's the skill factor, right? All the technical ability. So you have to have that kind of precision and the storytelling devices while you're doing it. Um, it's the selling of it. It's, it's giving of that, it's uh, your presentation. And so I thought that while I learn the moves or while I try to learn the moves and find people that will help show me, I can focus on a character because I thought at least, at least this much I can provide. And it can be so hard to get up sometimes and be happy that I can, I can give that to people, even if it's hard for me to get up and be happy. So I created the sugar creature like a Popeye effect and I wore a tail and I had ears. The ears never stayed on during the match. I got very savvy at sewing the tails to my gear with backpack clips. It was very fun. Uh, and that comes from a real story. It comes from uh, running away from my dad's house when I'd go stay with him and uh, going to the 7-Eleven and getting a Slurpee in the middle of the night. And I would just sit in front of 7-Eleven or I'd walk to the beach down uh, by our house, and I would just sit and watch the water and drink a Slurpee. So a Slurpee became my uh, go-to, like my comfort drink. I had one when I was happy and like I got my first job, or I had one when I was really down, and that would be the thing my friends would give me to pick me back up. And so I thought if I could implement these very real things, I could uh, create a little, my own version of Pee Wee's Playhouse, but my own little universe um, for people to take a break from their life with. And, uh, and I, I found Chikara and I was like, hey, I have, I went to a seminar and I was like, <laughs> I just literally was like, hi, I wrestle as this. I think I'd fit in your universe, right? Like every other person that has a crazy gimmick, I'm sure. Message is quack and is like, hey, look, this would fit in your world, right? This, I wear a tail, I do these things. Um, and, and with a conversation I've, I've talked about before, I, uh, he, he told me that we're gonna, we're not gonna do this character here. And I was like, oh, what do you mean? I worked so hard on it because I put so much of myself into it, right? Mm -hmm. But that was the best thing that ever happened to me because I was, I was able to uh, explore myself in a different way. And of course you're gonna learn the moves in, at Wrestle Factory, like, of course you are. He knows every move, right? He knows all the moves. Um, and so that was just like a really good experience for me there because, you know, if here you, here you were with, uh, Molly Holly or mighty Molly, because it was Chikara and everything is, uh, really wacky and, and like a cartoon, a really exciting cartoon in Chikara. Um, and also I guess it's sister promotion, Dragon's Gate. What was it like to meet Molly, her being a veteran at, were you star struggling or was it just, you know, friendly? Well, I mean, I mean, she's awesome. I mean, she's amazing. I, I loved her growing up, and I, uh, I was very honored and privileged to be able to share the ring with her. Um, it was wonderful. I know Aja as well is a big fan, um, right? Like, of course we are. She's the Molly go around like it's amazing. Um, even the stuff she did, she did as not Molly, right? Mona. It was awesome. I, uh, it was just, it was just an honor. I just tried to soak it up. You know, you don't get a lot of time. So there's really no time or room for uh, for you to be starstruck. You know, you gotta like put you gotta put that in a box, <laughs> and you gotta work because you're gonna be in the ring with this woman, who's you know contributed so much for us. So you gotta work and show her like, hey, we're hanging and we're in company, and I can do this and I can hang with you, and then you know you can like finish it, and then you can be like. By the way, oh my God. And then you can, you know, <laughs> you can just like uh, vomit all this adoration on her. Um, <laughs> but I, I feel like you got to kind of like compartmentalize that because you don't get a lot of time before the show. 
and you want to make sure that you know everything that you got to do and if you got to take something a certain way or be, be a certain position like you know you got to put your uh not that you don't handle every match trying to make it your best but especially in these situations you want to make sure you got all your stuff on point so she's lovely she's absolutely lovely she's wonderful yeah you have to be really coordinated and and your timing can't be off by a second can it no no we were taken care of though we had good people in there so it was fun you know i remember reading in rick flair's uh, first bio autobiography uh he, he would talk about some of the things that go on backstage like so casually like really cruel things like uh one guy put uh lighter fluid in an asthmatic wrestler's inhaler and i mean <laughs> i know he, well ben thinks it's funny but i mean i don't know is that do you think that that's a good rib or do you think that's just being a, an asshole i mean i mean yeah i just think it's kind of a dick thing to do i just I think there are certain ribs that I, I find funnier than others. I think we lost all the ability to rib and it takes away from the culture, but I don't, I can't condone ones that really like, that 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 would fuck me up. I have asthma. That would, abs I would be like mad. Um, it depends on the rapport you have with the person too. I always thought the, um, the cheese slice ribs were really funny. I know certain people don't think those are funny. But what is that? Like, you put like a craft singles because you know cra like a like a um, craft singles the worst. Obviously, I love eating it, but it is it is like the stickiest, and you just open it up a little, you give it a little air, and that thing's just not coming off of anything. Um, and and you know some people would put it in like people's shoes or like you know right where you'd stick your hand in the bag, so it's like out, and then your cheese is just like in the bag or in a pocket, and you. And you just get like a whole hand of craft singles or it's like you put your socks on and you put your shoes on and there's just cheese in it. Like I think silly crap like that's really funny. Um, we have the Young Lions Cup at Chikara and people used to unscrew it and then put stuff in the base that would smell bad. and You, uh -oh. wouldn't, you wouldn't know what's going on. Like I think like that stuff, right? Like, you know, like a, like a PG animal house, like just like <laughs> stuff you can come back from that doesn't like ruin your gear or, you know, like you don't want to like put someone out of pocket or hurt someone, um, you know, personally, I think those the other ones are really funny, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the Shimmer, the, the Shimmer tag titles got hidden. Um, well, like none of us knew, none of us were in on the rib for obvious reasons, right? Half of us are terrible at poker faces. <laughs> and, and the two people that hit it, um, it was like they weren't around. It was something funny like this. Like they weren't around. We're calling our match. Um, Danger comes in and is like, oh, my God, where are the belts? And we're like, I don't know. We didn't see anything. And then, you know, and everyone's like looking around and it's like Rocky Horror with like everyone like calling everyone's name for the titles. And they were like somewhere so obvious, too. And like none of us saw it. And like people were like, hey, we're going to go on lockdown if we don't find these titles. And it was like the girls that hit it weren't around to let people know that they that they were being ribbed. Oh no. So it was just like imagine like imagine taking like a bathroom break and you're like, oh shit. Oh, people are looking for that. Man, okay. How long have you been looking for that? Um and it was that was really funny because then like we laughed extra hard because it was like, oh right. I was supposed to be there uh when you were looking for them. <laughs> wow. Like silly like silly stuff is like, you know, that's part of any culture isn't it like any form of entertainment or job like i don't know even if you have an office job like you gotta find ways there or i just have watched the office way too much and i'm thinking everyone has their own dwight and like that's just how it is um i would love to wrap somebody's suitcase in wrapping paper or something and duct tape it like while they're gone and then just like have them come back and be like what the fuck <laughs> like i don't know i just think like Stuff that like Jim and Dwight did is really funny, and that didn't like harm anyone. So like, you know, good ribs, good ribs. Well, I mean, there was another story in that book. There was another story in that book where he talked about somebody uh, knocking Johnny Valentine out of his wheelchair and pissing on him, and he and they said Johnny was just one of the boys, so he took it. I, I don't. I never understood that. No. I mean, come on. You know? I don't know. I don't understand that. <laughs> I don't want to be peed on. What the heck was that? I don't know.
I don't want to be peed on. Nobody wants to be peed on, really. I'm, I'm you, sorry if that. Not, I on. think Jeremy does. Yeah, unless you want to be peed on, then then you want to be peed on. But most people don't want to be peed on. I'm not going to pee on somebody. That's not my style. Right. Yeah, right. Jeremy is just one of those people. I think. No, it's, I'm not. <laughs> no, he's I think that's what he's getting at. He's like, I just want. Yeah, you to the, know, I Jeremy is an absolute degenerate. <laughs> yeah, he also he. he, he I'm, I'm, a lot I'm, of weird. I'm behaving tonight. I'm on, I'm I'm behaving nicely. Stop. <laughs> well, you had said something about me too, didn't you? No, I did not. Okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Anyway, um, so right now you are the tag champions with Willow Nightingale, right? Yes. Yes, we are. How and long? Since October? Yeah, uh, November. First weekend of November, maybe. First yeah, weekend. and who did you defeat? Fist, who? Travis, and Deppin. Okay, so was it, it was intergender? Intergender? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, the, I noticed you work a lot of those matches. And, uh, you know, I, I know that a lot of the uh, uh, veterans, I guess, have been outspoken about not liking the intergender style. But I, I, I think that I, I think I can believe it. I mean, you, you, think you can. You girls uh, really take care of your bodies. And I believe that you could take yourselves. In, in a, you know, in a fight, you could handle yourselves in a, in self-defense. Absolutely. So I can buy it. I mean, women do hit men when there's a domestic, you know, situation, you know, and they, you know, e either one of them can hit each other. I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility that they could get their asses kicked by a woman. Right. I mean, yeah, I think, but I think that approach is the problem I have with why people don't understand intergender wrestling. It has nothing to do with fucking domestic violence no, right. That's not what I mean. that, these are athletes that are consenting to do their jobs like i think that the people coming at it was like well it's not believable first of all i'd love to see anyone get in the ring with me please fuck around and find out please. would you stretch him i mean no i'm but i'm saying i could like that's not the point of what we do though so it's kind of like well i can't believe that they would wrestle right but we're telling a story does anyone ever fucking question wonder woman no. i just want to know i just want to know if anyone calls her up and be like i don't believe that you uh are able to fight dudes <laughs> okay cool i just want to check in with you wonder woman thanks don't drive here in your invisible car and whip my ass like i don't know any woman in comic books or movies that we watch that are questioned Mm -hmm. So if I'm over here, and first, and another reason, this always gets me, what does my gender have to do with my ability to fight? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, because I'm not packing something with extra flesh that makes me less viable of a competitor? Oh, wait, that's not aimed at me, aimed at me is it? I, I didn't mean I that. I mean in general. Oh, okay. With the intergender in question. Yeah, it's, it's obvious you can't fight because you can't. You don't have a dick to beat someone to death with. <laughs> right? Like when people are like, "Well, I don't know. I can't. I can't watch it." Like, what? What? What, what can't you watch exactly? Because I don't go in there. At I'm reminded every day. I'm a woman, by the way. Oh. A wrestler doesn't get reminded that he is a man every day. You are a man, and you're a wrestler. Every day, I am reminded I am a female professional wrestler. That does get tiresome, doesn't? It? I can I can see how that gets tiresome. Yeah. Yes. Imagine being told every day, hey, good job being a man and doing that. It ah. must be hard. No, it's really hard that everyone has to see it first and go, wow, you're a woman and a wrestler? Oh, wow, you fight dudes? Yeah, I could lift a dude that's 275 pounds above my shoulders. That's cool. I had someone say that I couldn't carry him and he was like, he was like, a like just 200. And I was like, yeah, I just came from Europe and I've pump handled a 300 pound man. So, you know, oh, I don't know how you really feel about that. It's just, it, we're telling a story. Yeah. Was it Puff though that you're talking about? No, I love Puff though. I also know that I wouldn't try to lift him. <laughs> you, uh, you had some great matches with him and also, uh, I can't remember her name. Uh, I don't know. She's a, she's a bigger girl. It was an outdoor match. And, uh, Faye? Was it, is it Faye? Oh, for Beyond? Uh, Faye Jackson? Yes, yes. 
you had a great match with her. Um, that was Officer Magnum's debut for Beyond, and he pinned Fire Ant. For was it for like a hardcore title or something? No, it was like a they did like a an eating contest at first, and then it was a handicap match, and it was like it was at Feast when Feast was alive, um, and it was Dick Justice and Puff and the ants, the colony. And then they got outnumbered and they needed backup. So then they, you know, they hit Magnum's music and he came in to equal the odds. What is Magnum's music? <laughs> it is, it was the force. It was, uh, cause he, he comes out with officer Barksdale for Chikara. Oh, okay. So we use that for, uh, currently looking for, you know, other songs. Uh, oh. You know, he's, he's, he can't decide. He's just one of those guys, you know, ask his favorite band, he gives you 10. So we're just, we're trying to work it out with him, you know. <laughs> yeah, so Officer Magnum is a, is a, an aficionado of music. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's very passionate about it. He wants to make sure he's in the right vibe for that song. If he comes out to it, it's a whole process. We've all been there in our y younger years in a career, you know. <laughs> you, re you really spoil him, don't you? A hundred percent. That's great. Um, so a lot of people, when they think of wrestling, they only think of WWE and Vince McMahon's, you know, empire and, and whatnot. But the, the, the corners of wrestling that, that you uh, go through, uh, they're a lot more lively, spontaneous. What, what, what are the words I could use here? Um, the gimmicks don't come from some sort of pathology of, 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 of weird millionaire they're they're born out of a love of, of what comic books movies there's a lot of references to 80s nostalgia uh what else well yeah i think they're of our own volition it's um, like uh D, D character sheets where you kind of just you get to be well i i don't mean to to compare the two necessarily but you basically you can bring to life whatever you want at, it, you know in theoretically your yeah so it's pretty exciting that end of it, right? Yeah, I think so. I think the freedom of creativity is, you know, my favorite part of it, and it's why I would, it's why I love AEW, right? Is they they support the creation that you've been working on, you know, they support the brand you've been working on. Uh, I think that's wonderful. I think getting to your fullest self is also wonderful, right? Like I uh, I let go of the tail and Lufisto cut it off. And I was able to grow, and I wasn't really given a character. It was so funny because I was so wild and wacky, which I still am. I'm just, you know, I went through some stuff. <laughs> life hits you, like <laughs> life hits you pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, not in my twenties anymore. And the kids, it was like, all right, you're part of the Rumble Bees, and like that was it. Uh, this whole trajectory and growth of my character is all of my own volition. Um, I worked, I worked very hard on you know, adding the things I was passionate about that I didn't think I'd get to do, right? Like love, my love of like leg submissions and leg work. I didn't think I'd ever get to it because at the time I was learning on the road. But having that freedom of creativity, as I, I wouldn't change it for anything. You have to be your truest self. And sometimes people can offer that assistance and it helps you. Sometimes when coaches or trainers can be like, I think you should go in this direction. Depending on who they are, and you see the, what they've created bef before that, you're like, all right, I'm just going to follow you because you see something in me that I don't see yet. And that gives you more creativity. It doesn't hinder. It gives you that freedom of exploration where it's like, this is unknown territory. I don't know what I would do, but let's find out what I would do. Right? That's how you find out what your true character is when you're put into a situation that's kind of like fight or flight, and you can grow from that. I'm happy with where I'm at and continue to go. You know, another one of my favorite matches, and uh, I'm sorry, but I just really enjoyed it. It, 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 it was really fascinating. When, when two characters uh, with specific, uh, you know, gestures or something that, that is uniquely them, when the two of them interact, you know, it's really amazing to witness in the ring when they can play off each other. Like, you know, uh, for instance, on, in a more mainstream uh, example would be the loser goes to jail match with the boss man and the Mountie. We all remember that. And the Mountie ended up in jail at the end of the night. And it was funny, but, uh, there was an instance where you, uh, competed in a tag match against Joey Ryan and Candice LeRae. And, uh, 
he has this deal where he sticks a lollipop in uh, someone's mouth and uh, that he pulls out of his tights. And that's weird to begin with, to be honest. I don't know how everybody, but, uh, you know, you, instead of being like grossed out, you, you turned it into a benefit where you got a sugar rush out of it and beat the shit out of him. Yeah. And that was awesome. It was a nice little nod to the sugar creature, you know, it's in my veins somewhere. That was really fun. That was like good psychology though. I mean, yeah. Not that I'm not that I know anything about it. I'm not trying to put myself on your level, you know, you understand, but um uh do the you nuances. Think, huh? The nuances. Yeah, exactly. The 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 little things that make a good match, you know. Um what what uh, you said you were you liked uh leg submissions and whatnot. Like what do you do you use the Boston uh, or the Texas clover leaf as your finisher? Or no, it's a variation. It's not quite a clover leaf. A clover leaf you you hold the knee and it's on the other side. I technically do it on the Lucia side, air quotes. Um, for anyone that's listening and not watching, I uh, came up with it trying to learn another move from a luchador um, uh, where they, they put the legs in katagatame on the floor and then roll through and pick it up into a thing. So when I kept trying to do it, I kept ending up in weird places and then I, you know, played around a little more with it and got the sharp stinger, which uh, it it isn't. It's it's an underhook as well, right? Like it's on it's on one side and like you hold, you brace the knee and pick it up. Um, my version is it's quite stiffer, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> based on based on the surveys I've conducted after the matches, it's a little stiffer. I go underneath, so I pinch the leg and hook the ankle and then if i want to rib my opponent depending on who they are i can put my knuckles into their ankle um depends on how much fun i want to have with them so i mean these moves can legitimately fuck someone up if if they were applied with malice all, right all of them yes except the ex except mantequilla i think or not mantequilla the move but um what is it it's a butter knife except that one i think that's the only <laughs> the only submission that's not real <laughs> I'm sure there's other ones that are just for fun. It's like you hold the arm. It's really funny. We do it in class, and then you take your one hand and you like, saw the arm, but you have them all like pretzeled up. It doesn't really hurt. Oh, okay. It's just a cute move. Um, yeah, there's there's some like that that are more for the novelty of it, but a lot of the moves, you know, all come from things. They're, that's what I like. Huh. Tactical wrestling is probably my favorite chain wrestling or whatever we like to call it. Um, I really, I really do enjoy that. Mm. Um, do you, uh, do you think that the dark side of the ring show has a positive or negative impact on, on, you know, your, your business, the industry or whatever? Um, I don't necessarily think either way. I think it's very emotional. I think it can be like, a t I saw the tag team one. It was really emotional. I think people can, use that for a positive where they can see right we can see where our industry was in certain times and try to make those changes for the better so we don't you know continue the same pattern where we don't we don't make it we don't last you know we don't get the help we need uh it, it is interesting to see I, I find it more educational than negative or positive depend like because it depends on the person that's digesting that material if it, if the person has that optimistic outlook or wants to gain something positive or take that note and then make something with it, it's gonna be a positive outcome. But I do find them more educational than anything in that way. You know. Do you think, do, based on your position in wrestling, do you think there's anything that they get wrong, they got wrong in any of those episodes? I know oh, you're not. I'm ahead. not sure, I'm not sure. I would have to go, I've only seen a couple of them um, so I don't want to say like, oh, this was wrong. I'd, I'd have to go specifically and like, all right, here, let me watch that and compare notes. Um, you know, I'd like to think they did their research and and put it to the best of their ability. Uh, there was one on a, an indie promoter in the Carolinas. The Carolina boy said that they got that really accurate. So I thought, <laughs> uh, I can't remember his name. The UWF guy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I, I'll know the promotion when I, the, you know, the millions of letters that we combine to make promotion names. Herb Abram. Yeah, yeah. They, they, the, the Carolina boys were pretty like, yeah, 
That was that's about right. I was like, oh, okay, that was good. So. <laughs> Died covered in from head to toe in cocaine. I mean, what a way to go! And it and it is sad, but you know, that's yeah. it's pretty intense. Um, so so you said you have a farm. I mean, do do you do you do that full full time as well as on top of uh, veterinary studies and and traveling for for wrestling shows? I mean, it must be a busy schedule. I do a lot of things, kid. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yes, I, I run my quote unquote farm. I'm currently growing several different vegetables and fruits. I'm trying my hand at, at growing things while we're here in quarantine. Um, I recently learned how to build a door, like how to install a door because I needed one. So that was wacky and fun. I love doing that kind of stuff. Building things is really fun for me. Um, I make gear, I'm a seamstress. Um, I started taking commissions not too long ago for wrestlers and then we hit quarantine. So I still have a handful of commissions to actually do. So I make all my own gear and, and Magnum's gear. Uh, so I also do that. And then I run, I run a Patreon, it's just patreon.com solo darling. Um, and then on there I do photo sets. I'll sell photo sets. Uh, no, it's not like only fans. No, I won't do nudes. No, just go watch porn. It's free. Um, I upload a lot of information on there for people and I have a switch that I got the capture card for. So I'm going to try to stream to like hang out with people. I have a discord channel for my patrons so that like, they feel free to like talk anytime or if they need me for anything, especially in these times. Um, and in quarantine, I tried to be more available for them because we're all, we're all technically going out of our minds. It's fine. It's probably fine. Uh, so I try to do that and upload information you know, here's some animal stuff and here's my journal entries because I write a lot. Um, free form, fractured statements. Anytime I post that, it's from books I've written. I read I your article about pet insurance. I didn't know that was even a, a, a thing. Yeah. And it's a wild, it's a wild rabbit hole. Like there's not enough, um, to talk about empathy. There's not enough empathy in, in the way that they run their insurance for animals. These animals can't just go and be like, hey, uh, let me go to this website and find my provider and get, you know, oh, I need a $10 copay. I can afford that. They don't like, they're, <laughs> they literally are just waiting for us to take care of them, right? Like, they're just like, okay, you guys got us, right? <laughs> and, then, and the vets are like, yo, like, you need to pay 4G, like, right now or we, or your pet dies. Like, that's it. Like, that's oh, it. Man. And we're like, what the? Are you? And they're like, you could call your mom. What the? Did you just asked me. To All right. But there's not there's not really that much help, and they still have the audacity to do things like pre-existing conditions don't get help. Man, I've never know. understood that. Even in human healthcare, <laughs> I don't understand that. Yeah, especially when it's like, you know, Magnum can't be like, "Hey, mom, I'm allergic to peanuts." <laughs> so I have a skin. Yeah, he's like, you know, I don't know what he's allergic to right now, and he has a whole like skin rash on his belly from scratching himself open. So we have an appointment with the dermatologist to fix it, but it's like. Wait, yeah. they're at dermatologists? Oh yeah, you need a specialist in every in every department. Wow. Just that's as great. if you were a human, yeah. And they suffer from other diseases that we kind of like don't necessarily because right, our dentists try to make us show up this too many times a year and um, you know, but oral hygiene for a canine or a feline is like imperative and a sign. And if something's wrong with a tooth, like that's uh, that's not good. That's one of the last signs before you're losing your pet. Um, wait, wait, to, what tooth? An, an abscess tooth? Like or? like oral hygiene. Like when they start to say, you know, we got to work on these teeth or when they start to say, you know, make sure your gums are clean, make sure the dog and the cat have this for their teeth. And their oral hygiene is a big signal to what's going on inside. So if you start to, to smell that like, you know, that cemetery breath, I hate to say it like that, but like- I think I know what you're talking about, yeah. <laughs> And you and they lick you and it stays on you and you smell it. Yeah, that's not good. That is the last sign of all the signs, which I feel like pet owners should be privy to this, right? Like, you know, pet owners should get some kind of like, hey, check this out just to make sure if these signs happen, your pet could have this. There's all these tells, right? Which is why I went into vet tech. I felt like so helpless um, with my cat Rosemary, and she suffered, and I. I was like, well, she's not going out like this. I need to learn. So you're going to teach me how to fucking do it right now. And I like fought with the vets in the office. It was great. It was really a really liberating time. Um, but without knowing how to take care of her, they were like, 
yeah, it's going to cost you two fifty a week, a pumper full of fluids. It doesn't look good. Her kidneys are failing. You might as well oh. just. And I ripped them several new taints because no one is going to tell me how to take care of my girl. And I was like, you're going to show me how to give her fluids. All right, I can do it myself, right? All right, let's go. She lasted over another year. I got another year plus with her when they were like, she's going to be gone in three weeks. I was like, no, she's not. But it's that kind of information. And when the breath goes, it means that they've had a lot of signs and that they're in critical condition. Something is going on internally. Um, I'm, glad, I'm glad I know that now. They should wow. be checked. Yeah. Uh, what, what are some other things on your Patreon uh, uh, that, uh, that that you get uh, for, there are different tiers, obviously. I don't yeah. get much, but what, what are some of the thing, the benefits? Uh, I know for, I, I added two more tiers. Um, I had a handful of people come to me and be like, add more tiers. And I was like, what do you want on these tiers? Oh, I already give you a, I'll put up all my sewing on there for, for everyone to see. I've shared my, um, my patterns, which are, I, I feel like seamstresses find that valuable to see how you take your measurements. Uh, so for anyone that's learning to make gear or anything like that, you can do that. Skincare consultations. I work worked for when we were working uh worked for lush cosmetics it's a all natural organic mostly vegan but all vegetarian um skincare place basically they're the home of the bath bombs but they do everything and so i offer like well this is what i have to do for my job like let me help you let me see what we can do to get you feeling the way you want to feel so i always offer that to kind of help people out with it uh, my top tiers also will include like a zoom call um, which I have to set up as I just started these tiers, and now we're we're getting to be that time where we all have a Zoom call hangout. Uh, you can hang out and play Switch. We could do like a one-on-one -on -one, uh, type of thing. I post uh, a little bit more, a uh, little, little little higher rated on the photo photo posting there because I do sell photo sets, and um, and I'll do shoots and I'll do different like lingerie or underwear covered up things. Um, I try to, you know, give it a little bit of my zest there. But I will post a photo, and all those fractured statements that you're going to get on the two top tiers are all based on real things that have happened. Uh, more, more will come. More will, you know, more posts will happen. I'll kind of get into more detail with them. Um, it's just scratching the surface now. But more like my approach to a Sex in the City, where I'll use a real experience and share it with a photo. Um, that's kind of how I write my journals, like one experience and then I kind of embellish or take a pull of thread as to what would happen or just kind of like let my creativity run on that. Yes. Um, what's there are games too. Huh? What's your game you sw uh, on Switch? Uh, right now, I'm, unfortunately, it's like not an online game. I'm doing Mario Deluxe. <laughs> but uh, I'm happy to do like, you know, the new Mario Kart, or Smash Brothers, I'm terrible at these games. So basically, you're gonna play with me and like hear me curse out a bunch in Spanish and like not play well, but it'll be really fun. So I <laughs> mm. be like, what? And then just like yelling Spanish absurdities. I've played with the group at some times, like, you know, like we do like a whole thing and we all like race and I lose and it's great. Dan Barry played with us a couple times and he's really good at the game. So like he would just, he wasn't, he just kept laughing because I was yelling at him for winning all the time. Um, but any of those multiplayer games, I also have like the SNES, like, you know, you download it on there and whatever, and we can play like the old school games. Um, yeah. And I decided to try and upload more photo shoots of Magnum on all the tiers because yeah. I felt like people, <laughs> people would want to see like how many pictures it take, take pictures of Magnum and Loki. So does he ever get aggravated? Does he ever get like, uh, nervous? being out there with you or sometimes he gets a little shook i um you know and it, it's just like people sometimes you're tired or you don't you're not feeling it that day you know you're not feeling it that day mm -hmm. and uh and sometimes most of the time he's, he knows what's up and he's just kind of like yeah this is what i do um loki coming into the picture i think reminded him he was a dog uh, and then he was like, wait a minute, am I not supposed to find this normal? And I think he had that weird, like, check with his own reality. This is what I want to believe. This is the story I'll tell. And he was like, whoa, Loki, we're not supposed to, like, go out. To, we're not professional wrestlers. Like, what are you talking about? And she was like, yo, man, you're a dog. 
Like, <laughs> you're a dog. We need to bark right now. We need to be like real upset at these loud sounds. Like, what are you doing? And he like went, uh, that's when he started to get nervous again. Cause he'd go out and pull back. Like he just remembered he's a dog. Oh no. Oh my God. Why is everything so loud all of a sudden? Um, so I've been trying desperately to train her over quarantine to get her ready because she's glued to me. She's going to have to come to shows and she's not ring ready. He is. Uh, but for the most part, he just goes in, especially at beyond, especially at beyond likes to make little rounds. You know, all our regulars are there. All our fans are there. He like sits on somebody's hands and sets, you know, Usually the foot, but when you're at Beyond, he's on the apron. He's like, "Well, I got hands to sit on, I guess." And uh, he gets his pets and his selfies. He has, you know, loved ones take him down the steps because he doesn't jump down. He likes to take the steps. <laughs> um, Loki likes to just jump in the ring. She'll do, she'll jump in the ring and she'll circle and then low pay out. Like she's gonna be a spot monkey. I'm really excited about it. Uh, if I can get her to not be nervous with people. So yeah, he's just like seasoned. You know, for the most part. So, did I understand you're going to have two dogs accompanying you to the ring, or are you going to alternate? No, no, it's, it's me and Magnum. We're oh. the yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh, she is very much my energy. But if I were a dog, I don't know that my energy and being a dog would like work out. I'm I will try on occasion to bring both of them out for like special events, but she gets very stressed out. So we've been working on things. She really likes to take super kicks now. She wants to do super kicks forever so she can sell around and get treats. Sometimes she just starts spinning. She doesn't even know. She doesn't she just start spinning. Um, she does a really good crawl, so I want her to get comfortable. She comes from, um, she, she's had a traumatic past because I have to get through some barriers with her. Was she a rescue? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, she was in and out of shelters for three years. She's only four now, so this is the longest she's been in a home in her whole life. Who who are some of your favorite opponents? Team Tremendous. And, and I, I'm not familiar. I, what you, Team Tremendous? I know. I'm still I'm still learning this this area that you uh, inhabit in in wrestling. I, I followed for about a year. Uh, well, well, I know a few names. You know, I know Veda Scott. Uh, Tessa Blanchard, the world's uh, cutest tag team, and uh, Puff and Allison K, the Midwest Militia, and all that. I know all that, but I'm there's still some that I'm not uh, familiar with. So, uncharted territory from beyond is a great place to start. Okay, um, it's really is that a show. Is that, a, is that an event? Beyond is a is basically my also my home promotion where I'm. My home promotion is Chikara, but it's also beyond. I work them like I, those are my priorities with Shimmer because Shimmer runs twice a year. So it's really, so like those are the three main places. Um, and if anyone else hears this, I love working with you too. These are just the main places I work. This is just the main place I work because they, they operate frequently. Um, and beyond up north in Massachusetts uh, started to run a weekly live show and that was called that series is called uncharted territories uh, i've had some of my best matches there um i loved wrestling like layla hirsch she came out of left field just being amazing and awesome I, I love her uh i have a great time with john silver and alex reynolds they're incredible workers they were the beaver boys as a tag team and now they're part of the dark order in AEW. they're incredible uh we had uh, Willow and I have also had some fun uh, working for Primetime Pro Wrestling. Um, I love wrestling uh, my friend from Chikara, Still Life. Uh, they are the first um, out non-binary professional wrestler. They're they're amazing to watch. I've watched them start and just just come miles from that, like hundreds of miles from that. They're in, they're incredible in the ring um, and they're still growing. So it's always really fun to watch. Uh, but a lot of the, the work that we did in Uncharted or I, I tried to do as a singles competitor while Willow was healing, I really loved. I had a lot of fun there. Okay. Yeah. And then Wrestling Fist was, you know, when we, when we did win the championships uh, or the titles, uh, 
that was a really fun, intense match. So when you have a, when you have a titles match like that, it's like two out of three falls. When are you and Willow defending the tag titles again? Do you have a show coming up for that? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know when. I know some wrestling is happening. I know it's not safe. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, I know it's like, because like you know you can't really just crowds. Somebody posted a picture of IWA Mid South having like a huge crowd already, and like no one's following any kind of guidelines. And you can't wear masks in the ring, right? Are we? Can it you. Some of us have when we've like tried to entertain the idea of rolling around again, but none of us were in the ring together. You know, we kept distance. We would just do rolls in and out of the ring in a mask. Okay. Yeah. You guys, uh, I know that you guys aren't wrestling fans per se, but uh, do you have any questions for Solo? Come on, don't be shy. Yeah, it doesn't have to be about wrestling. I, mean, also. Well, there you go. I, I don't know anything about wrestling, so I got nothing. Well, she's, yeah, she's, she's never a been cool anything person, ever. though. Maybe you got something about just some question about, you know, things she's talked about besides that. Uh, um, not really. Okay. <laughs> we're, no, we're, like I said, we're, we're terrible hosts. <laughs> yeah, and it's just such a thing that we've not really, like, I I think I grew up, like, right when, like, it wasn't on TV. Like, I never saw any, like, uh, like WWE was, like, never on so I just never was really exposed to it. Grew up, in the South, never, grew up in the South, never exposed to wrestling. I mean, that's a first. I, I mean, you know. It, it's true. I, I've, <laughs> I was just never exposed to it. I'm, I might like it if I've watched it. I just can't really say. I think independent wrestling now is very entertaining. I actually like our era more. You know, that's my favorite era because I'm close to everyone. I get to see their their strides. Like I'm watching people grow in the ring, you know. Yeah. What is it that Billy Corgan did? I knew he was involved with something in wrestling, but I, I obviously have no idea what it was. Uh, TNA? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what it is. He yeah. bought it, and then there was a big fallout with, uh, I don't know, the, the investors or something. And, uh, yeah. yeah. He, well, what are, you two, what are you two into then? Ah, we're basically just book nerds. Uh, I, really I, I'm not doing. into anything. I don't like shit and I don't go outside. <laughs> so what do you do? <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I, I prefer to like read, watch movies. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> do you watch shows? Uh, every time I go on Netflix telling myself I'm going to watch something, but why the, besides The Twilight Zone, I fail. <laughs> oh, the Twilight Zone. What about, like what about like Westworld? Um, I really, really dug Mrs. America, especially because that's like a really important era in time, and we're kind of going through the exact same thing in different ways. Uh, I, I'm watching The Politician now. That's on Netflix, and Hollywood was a great series. I really dug that. I really like um, like dramas that I can kind of sink my teeth into that also have like comedy in it like righteous gemstones is like the funniest thing i've seen and go on hbo it's the hbo one but i think you can also see it through hulu now because hulu's just trying to like acquire everything i think um but righteous gemstones cracks me up you should definitely check that one out what about the thing i saw on netflix with bates motel now i'm like almost through twin peaks oh nice twin peaks is on my to watch list i like to binge shows i love movies um, and I just feel like with the time we have, though, I I gravitate to shows that I can watch seasons of at a yeah. time. That's what I've been doing, too. I've never actually done that till now. That's why I finally bit the bullet and just watched all five seasons of Bates Motel because I'd only just rewatched the movies over and over. Yeah. And I heard that was so good. I just haven't I haven't gotten there yet. Um, you know, what? every time I, I follow a series to its end. I get so pissed off with, between Sopranos with the fade to black to Game of Thrones. Jon Snow it loses everything and has to go back to the north. I, I, I'm I'm done with series finales. You know, mm -hmm. I'm cool with Game of Thrones because there's 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 no way we're gonna be happy with it. Mm, that's so yeah. I was like, I'm you know I'm just gonna take it for what it is. These writers struggled. They were on the struggle bus. They wrote themselves here, and uh, I'm just going to appreciate the work that they put into it. 
I, I thought there were so many other ways that situation could have been handled other than John stabbing uh, Danieris through the heart uh, while he's kissing her. I just felt like there was a better way to address that tr problem. <laughs> it's, you know, but if, uh, I, if I had to go out, if I had to go out, I guess, I guess, you know, take me out while I'm getting kissed, I guess. Right. I don't know. I feel like at least, you know, she went out on a high note, I think. Well, in real life, you would be coughing blood into their mouths, and that's not fair. Stop after. I mean, as soon as you feel the, you know, the, the little, yeah. little boop, yeah, that's you feel like, like, feel. oh, man, this was a, this was, I got ribbed. <laughs> <laughs> Death etiquette. Yeah. Oh, that's a terrible that's rib. Oh, man, I don't think I can bounce back from this one. <laughs> <laughs> The only show I've been able to watch to like from beginning to end recently is uh, when I rewatch Cowboy Bebop because normally I, I have the attention span of a hummingbird trying to get laid. Nice, nice. That's very specific. Nice. I have other follow up questions for our next interview. Um, <laughs> I uh, yeah, big Rick and Morty fan. Adventure Time. Uh, the regular show that doesn't get enough love. That doesn't get nearly enough love. Regular show. Uh, that show I liked it, but. You can only like you can only watch like one episode a week because it's like each show has like that same formula, and it's like it just like after a while it just like wears on you. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's been a long time since I've done a rewatch though. <laughs> oh, uh, Letter Kenny, Letter Kenny's great. Man, you're, like you're throwing some real question marks at me here. I, I, I'm, I haven't heard of any of these. Hmm, you have what to go back and write them all down. What about Glow? Yeah. Oh, oh my God, Mark Marin. I have such a huge crush on Mark Marin. Yeah, I love it. I love it. But the Glow series? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Even though that may remind you that you're a woman, I don't know, but I mean, there's history there, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I'm, I'm um, proud. I'm proud of who I am. I, uh, <laughs> I'm proud of who I am. I just like to be like, yeah, let's watch Glow. This is where, like, you know, we did this, I guess. <laughs> and like, and we're doing this now. And a lot of my friends got to like be in it and involved with it. And like, that's super cool. And, um, you know, Mark Maron's cool. You know, let's get throw that out there again. <laughs> you know, uh, I gotta be honest. I came into this with a, a, a preconception or two, and I'm glad that you shattered them um, because I don't engage with the political. And I know you don't see it as political correctness, but, you know, I guess we had we come at it from different angles. And so I was worried that it may it may become a volatile discussion at some point. But I'm, I, I really respected how you uh, approached the first dis thing that we talked about from not not from both sides but how you know empathy for all humans I, I really respected that that's a, that's a good way out other than just a lynch mob you know uh, yeah, that's really the thing you never in fact you kind of see that angle get attacked i mean i, I know everyone has like the freaking um a million ways to tear apart the whole like all lives matter take and i don't even really know what they are or care that much because I, I just don't really pay attention but all of these issues always become like super toxic and i hate seeing people especially on social media they, they don't like they, they don't realize that all this like annoying real petty attacking is gonna like like nothing's gonna be fixed about it like everyone's just still gonna be mad at each other and the freaking like tearing apart like a notion like all lives matter, which I get it. I get why they're saying you need to tear it apart. Yeah, it's a little like, different than the than the wrestling conversation. Oh uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, the all lives matter thing's a little bit of a different conversation, but Yeah, well, I wasn't really wanting to have like a conversation about that because I don't know like anything about what people are saying. I'm just talking like completely as an outsider, everyone gets freaking annoying about it. And it's like all it's going to do is goad people into fighting like it never ends. The bickering, the the, in, the infighting, the the division, that's what he's talking about, right? Yeah. 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 Well, and it's very it's very difficult to navigate um, and sometimes it's just best to not 
to not say and just learn. And I think specifically, um, I must comment on it from a million different for a million different reasons. I am a non-black person of color. Uh, my tag team partner is black. Um, black Lives Matter is really important. And the difference in that is that saying all lives matter comes from a place of general ignorance. Um, because what we're trying to do is get there, but we can't get there without bringing Black Lives Matter into the equation. Um, blanket Blanketing kind of like, well, all lives matter. It's like, right, but you're denying the current state of things and the inequality between races. Yeah, I understand that. I'm just talking about like a baseline seeing people on Facebook more like oh yeah facebook's the worst so. there's a lot of times where we can't even get to what you just said because that it becomes this game of who can sh you know shame you first is what he i think he means uh yeah and then and if if you guys do follow our social media um we mostly play on instagram at this point because it's a place where you can actually get information and like share and not be you know crucified um we Right, it, it is our responsibility to educate ourselves on the current state of things. It is not a black person's responsibility to educate everyone on the gazillion years of unnecessary suffering in all ways, right? Because that's a very dense topic and I wanna make sure I, uh, I let you know the right things quickly because <laughs> um, I could talk about that forever. We want to support, we want to boost signal, um, especially being white or just not being a person of color, we can and have different, air quote, privileges. We have different abilities and it shouldn't be that way. But, you know, the complexities of the matter leave it to which we can share posts and educate between each other. Um, and you'll see soon I'll post on Patreon a whole list of uh, black owned businesses we can support and that, that are you know that need our our voice and that have great product and great work but they can't get there they can't get on certain levels because and that's like a weird thing to say but it's like a weird thing that's still happening um so we want to take it from a proactive sense and a positive sense and make sure it's like well yeah of course and let's support this group and let's you know maybe we don't have to donate maybe we can just buy somebody's new tequila like there's a there's a company we just found that they make like a really dope tequila. So like, let's support them and just buy it. And like, let's be consumers and raise their voices that way. And from that comes that raise of, of equality. Like we get to the all lives matter because we start to raise that signal. Uh, but we are we are very positive people, Willow and I, and uh, we do believe in, the, in, a, in a better world and a better life. So we'll always try to post things and share things so no one has to feel like you know, we've got pitchforks and we're setting everything on fire. <laughs> we, we do want to welcome more people and there should be nothing wrong with you didn't know. It's okay. We can know to now. We can know it right now together. Um, and that's okay. That's what we're here for. Um, I don't know if I should ask this next question, but I, I think I'm going to uh, just attempt fate. Um, and, and it's not, to, it's not, meant with any kind of malice i just have to know do you think there's any chance that that this going on that, that's pointing fingers at david Starr has anything to do with him wanting to organize a union for pro wrestlers uh, are you muted uh no uh, am i no i don't think so so you don't think there's anything that any chance that it could be related to that in any way well, no, I don't know. Um, I just meant I wasn't muted. <laughs> I, I don't know. I do know. Um, I don't know. I, I have observed this. Um, a very personal, unhealthy relationship was brought to a jury of people online. Um, and I don't think it was for us. And I, I want the people to heal. I want the girls to heal. I do. Uh, so I, I would love for them to feel some kind of closure. Um, and, and everyone has their own ways in which they go about that. Mm -hmm. And I know some, maybe some people that hopped on the bandwagon 
unfortunately don't care about the girls and maybe they do care about just taking down a human. I don't like that the feeling of Twitter that they're so ready to take down a human. Um, I will never invalidate anything that happened to the girls. I feel really, uh, I'm really my heart goes to them for their, for what they've been through. Um, to me, it reads like a very ill-equipped, um, hurting person, a very, you know, a hurting person that hurt other people, hmm. a hurting person that hurt other people. And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's as concise as I can kind of convey something that's so complex and personal, like a relationship between two people is, is just that. And that doesn't mean you're at your best with that person. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that, that you're at your best or that I'm at my best. And it, and that shouldn't invalidate anything. That's not here to invalidate. That's, that's here to understand that just to understand. I made a huge post, which I think Jeremy you might've seen about yeah. um, that I posted on Instagram was just because I want to understand, you know, I claim to care about these people. I can't just give that up in a, in a whim because, you know, everything was put online. Mm -hmm. That's not how the heart works. That's not how mine works. Not when I say that I'm with you. I need to understand so I can help fix it so it doesn't happen again. Um, because that's why we're here. So I don't know if other people, unfortunately, jumped on the bandwagon because they don't want the union. I guess anything is possible, right? And, you know, people can see it and just be like, yeah, I didn't like that guy anyway. And I, I I did see a lot of that for the guys, and I feel like, all right, well, you're, you're kind of open to that when you go online, right? You go online and you post, you're kind of like subjecting that to the possibility of, of everyone commenting, which makes it so broad, it's hard to get an opinion on it because you don't know like what you're going to get out of um, any of that. I am sad that it happened. I'm really sad. Um, not that our way was working. It wasn't. It wasn't working. Our way was not working as a, as a people's wrestling. Um, so there's what do you mean your way. I don't. I don't know what you mean. The, you, the way that things were running, the way that oh. things were running, and they, they weren't working. And they needed some kind of right. That the tension was there. It needed a release. I. Uh, I feel for everyone. I feel for everyone though. So, I hope people were genuine in what they were saying, and I hope that the visceral comments will subside so that people could start to figure out that uh, depleting their own energy levels for hate, just mm -hmm. depletes your energy levels for hate, it doesn't make you love any better. It just, it doesn't make you care anymore or get better at caring. And getting better at caring and loving is what's going to fix all of this. And all these guys that need the help. Yeah, and all the girls that need to feel healed. It's a lot of, it's a lot of trauma. Um, and if it's about the union, when wow, was I worked? <laughs> Got me. Uh, you know. Okay. Well, uh, I hope it wasn't all depressing solo. I really appreciate your candor, and uh, I, 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 this really went amazing. And uh, never thought I'd be interviewing you here on on my very very small show, but I appreciate you taking the time out of your evening to to come and comment on uncomfortable things and as well as as well as just you know fun things so yeah hey, gotta get your hands dirty thank you guys for having me thanks uh, for hearing me out i appreciate the time that you spent yeah thanks for coming on thank you of course Have a great night you too right. bye bye wow that 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 is one awesome lady that yeah, way yeah, here, i kept yeah. trying to goad it into like <laughs> I know, I know. I wanted to try something different because she is an entertainer in a in a form that forum that I uh, am very familiar with, and uh, I knew that being my usual abrasive self was not going to do any good. It was just going to make her go off mad, and I'm I'm trying to be more diplomatic, you know, with some people, people who deserve it. Um, she was very cool. I just wanted to remind her of your your abrasive self, but it's yeah. 